Okay. Era, eh? Okay. Hi everyone, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Maria Eugenia and I am with my colleague Adele, who will be in charge of showing you this amazing area of our country. Uh, thank you very much for being with us this morning. And Adele, let's start with this amazing journey around Patagonia. Thank you, Maria Eugenia. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon for some of you. Um, and welcome to our webinar, uh, Austral Patagonia Part 2. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. So um, let's pick up where we started last, uh, where we left last week, two weeks ago. We traveled uh, through El Calafate and we showed you how to combine this destination with El Chalten and uh, Torres del Paine. Um, the idea was to show you how to organize a five to 15 days journey, avoiding too much flights and combining uh, great areas of this destination. We finished the webinar with uh, Puerto Natales and uh, Punta Arenas with the Australis cruise uh, leaving Chile towards uh, Ushuaia, the most uh, southern city of the world. So today we will continue uh, with this itinerary and we will focus on Ushuaia and the Tierra del Fuego. Tierra del Fuego means land of fire in Spanish. It is a destination that shows a very uh, great variety of excursions for everyone from conventional visits to exploration cruises in the deep unexplored uh, Patagonia. So before uh, anything, I will just uh, do a little refreshing about who we are, Eurotour. Eurotour is an Argentinian DMC based in uh, Buenos Aires. We uh, work with incoming tourism since 1954. So it's been a long time now. Uh, we organize and plan trips for your passengers through uh, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, Bolivia, Uruguay, Paraguay, Peru um, and more and the countries in South America. And we have specialized departments in FIT groups and MICE. Through the years, we opened uh, three more offices in Argentina, so in El, Chalte, in El Calafate and in Ushuaia in Patagonia, and in Salta in the northwest of Argentina. We are very proud of these offices since they allow us the unique opportunity to give your passengers and clients the best uh, customized services, uh, and it gives us a deep local knowledge. We also have a 24-7 assistance by WhatsApp, mail, uh, and phone for your passengers. And we are renowned for our excellent advising knowledge of the destinations and the many products uh, availability and services in Argentina. So Ushuaia is uh, famous for being the most southern uh, city of uh, the world. It is located on the uh, most southern region of Argentina and of the American continent. It is the gateway to Antarctica, uh, around 1,000 kilometers, and uh, therefore it is an important destination for cruises and expeditions. And the capital city of Tierra del Fuego is Ushuaia. Um, even though Puerto Williams, which you can see on the map uh, here, is located in Chile, is what used to be considered the most uh, southern city of the world. Um, it has less than 5,000 inhabitants, therefore it is not considered a city anymore. You can see that the Tierra del Fuego is divided between Chile and Argentina. 
here and uh, it is crossed by the uh, Beagle Channel. The first inhabitants of the region were the Shamanas and the Shaganas, uh, but they were decimated by the colonizations and the illnesses European brought with them. You will see, what, while visiting Ushuaia, you will see many memories of this population um, the, in the museums and during some tours, you will uh, be able to learn more about their culture. In the Tierra del Fuego uh, great region, we have uh, two famous national parks, the National Park Tierra del Fuego in Argentina and the National Park Alberto de Agostini in Chile. Uh, it is also from Ushuaia that you can reach the uh, Cape Horn, the famous uh, Cape Horn. So um, now a more specific map of Ushuaia. As you can see, Ushuaia is located here at the border with Chile. And during the presentation, we will focus on three regions. Ushuaia, of course, in the city and the excursions you can do from the city of Ushuaia. But the idea is also to um, get away from the classical excursions. And we will present the excursions on the Beagle Channel and the Estancia Harberton located here and uh, Cape San Pablo. We will present some excursions that goes deeper into the Tierra del Fuego region to explore those uh, unspoiled uh, land. How to arrive uh, in Ushuaia? By plane, usually it is a four hour journey from Buenos Aires or a one hour 15 from El Calafate, a very famous region uh, in Patagonia. And two hours plane from Puerto Madryn, another region in Patagonia. You can also reach Ushuaia by bus from Punta Arenas in Chile uh, or by cruise with the Australis cruise, for example. I will come back to that uh, later. It is well communicated with the rest of uh, Argentina and uh, with many flights uh, per day. And the airport is very close to the city center, almost 10 kilometers. Um, so uh, the big old channel, as you can see on the map, connect the Atlantic and the Pacific uh, Oceans together. And before the Panama Channel, uh, the crossing from one ocean to another was passing by uh, Cape Horn, meaning uh, this destination hosted a lot of explorers, uh, as the Beagle, for example, uh, Fitzroy also, and uh, it carries a lot of strong history. As you can see, Ushuaia is located uh, between mountains, the Enns Range and the Beagle Channel. It is the only city in uh, Argentina located west of the uh, Enns Range, for example. And it is a destination that can be visited all year round with uh, stable temperature most of the year. It is quite cold, uh, uh, but temperatures almost never go under zero degrees Celsius, for example. And we have a very high season from October to April, which is uh, our summer, with a very long days of sunlight. Uh, we are far south. Uh, it is like in the North Pole. So from uh, 4 a.m. to midnight during uh, the summer. And we have a low season during winter with very short days. Um, from May to September, and the sunlight would be from 10 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m. We also have a, a high season during the, se uh, during the winter, uh, as Ushuaia is a ski resort and is uh, famous around the world uh, for its great uh, cross-country skiing um, conditions. When visiting Ushuaia, um, we have three excursions that we recommend, the classical excursions uh, and destinations. And I will present them to you with some alternatives for passengers who want to uh, get off the beaten track. So first, uh, we recommend at least two nights and three days to be able to visit the National Park Tierra del Fuego, then take a navigation on the Beagle Channel and have time to do the city tour. First of all, um, let's talk about the excursions towards the uh, Tierra del Fuego National Park. Uh, this is a must-do excursion that we always recommend, um, and you can visit it on different modalities. The National Park is located eight kilometers away from Ushuaia, so it is very close, and it is at the border with Chile. It is reachable by car, and we have guided excursions for, for passengers who want to go on their own with a rental car. It is absolutely possible. And it is the only national park in Argentina that con um, connects the oceans, lakes, and forests. So Tierra, um, Tierra del Fuego National Park Visit uh, Conventional is a four-hour excursion. It operates all year, and uh, the excursion can be due a.m. or p.m. There will be three stops. So as you can see on the map here, you have the city of Ushuaia. Then we take a, a vehicle 
we arrive at the entrance of the park and these are the stops we will make, the sightseeing stops we will make at the Bahia Ensenada, Bahia La Pataya and the Lake Asigami. Uh, arriving at the entrance of the national parks, passengers can uh, choose to take an optional train to the end of the world. Um, that is a one hour ride with one stop in the middle. Passengers who don't want to take the train can continue on the road with the guide and they will meet those who took the train later on here at the uh, entrance of the national park. Uh, this is a picture of the entrance of the National Park where passengers can take the train. You don't need to pre-book these options uh, as all excursions will have a stop there arriving at the National Park and will offer the passengers to either hop on the train or uh, continue by car. These are some pictures of the train uh, to the end of the world. Uh, so for those who will uh, take this option, they will leave the end of the world station toward the National Park and they will listen uh, in the train, they will listen uh, about the history of the train, uh, Ushuaia and the National Park. This train is a historical monument and it was built in 1902 to transport the prisoners who made the journey every day to load material collected during the working day to Ushuaia. So the end of the world train used to uh, leave the prison in the morning, which was located in Ushuaia, to reach Monte Susana, and then they would return at the end of the day with the load. In 1949, uh, a strong earthquake made the tracks impossible to use, and it was abandoned until the, uh, the 19th, where, um, when the recreation of the train began and it became a touristic attraction. This is the um, uh, touristic uh, itinerary of the train. So passengers embark on Estación del Fin del Mundo. They will continue see the uh, Puente Camado. They will not stop there. Then they will stop at the uh, Macarena waterfall. They can choose to stay um, on uh, at the train station or go up to the waterfall to have a view of the valley. And then they will continue into the National Park and meet the guides at the extension uh, at the station uh, National Park. Once they are uh, reunited with all the other passengers from the uh, excursions, um, they will continue to Ensenada Bay. Uh, Insana Bay is uh, the viewpoint of the Isla Redonda. We used to have little boats uh, that could take you there, but it is not, not working anymore. And we always recommend the passengers to uh, take your pass their passport along. Uh, as a, the cabin you can see on the picture is a post office where you can get a stamp uh, to the end of the world. So it is a, a nice attraction. After the Ensenada Bay, you will continue to La Pataya Bay at the extreme west of the park. It is uh, famous because it is the end of Route 3 that starts in Buenos Aires. And it is also the end of the great crossing of the continent starting in uh, Alaska. So in La, Pata Bay, uh, La Pataya Bay, you have a little catwalk. Uh, it's a 15 minutes walk. There is no elevation. It's very accessible to have a look on the Big Old Channel. And then they will hop on the, uh, the vehicle again and continue to Lago Asigami to have a great view of uh, this lake. And uh, after uh, visiting the lake, they will go to the visitor center when they can uh, use the bathroom, take a hot drink and a snack, buy souvenirs, and then they will head back to Ushuaia. We usually recommend taking this excursion on the morning. Uh, so in the afternoon, they can do another half day excursion such as the city tour or the navigation on the Big Old Channel. For um, passengers who want to avoid the masses, we recommend to visit the national park with a little hike. The uh, national parks offers a great uh, variety of hikes that are more or less difficult. And this excursion uh, includes uh, only soft hikes, so it is very accessible. It operates from October to May during the, uh, the summer uh, and autumn, as in the winters, there's too much snow and it lasts uh, six hours. So this is a map of uh, the different hikes they will be able to do. This option does not allow taking the optional train ride to the uh, end uh, of the world train uh, because they won't stop at the station. They will leave Ushuaia on a four and four vehicle and uh, get to the La Pataya Bay first. From there, they will walk uh, a little until the Rio La Pataya, take the bus again, 
and then they will uh, go on this trail. They will not do the eight kilometers, of course, and the four and four vehicle will uh, allow them to do little hikes and then hop on the vehicle again and uh, this way visit the park where there is almost no one. It is a great option because uh, from uh, they will not be uh, at the highlights at the same time as the regular excursions. So they will feel uh, like they are alone in the world. And then for uh, more active passengers, we recommend the national park with hike and canoes. It includes an eight kilometers hike, so it is more demanding and a one hour canoe experience. It operates all year. We have a summer and a winter version, and it includes a lunch and drinks uh, in a refuge in the middle of the national park. And these are some pictures of the canoe experience the, when they reach um, the Bahia La Pataya. And these are some pictures of the winter edition. Uh, this option is in contact, in deep contact with nature. It is more demanding, but it does not require any uh, previous experience. And it allows seeing the national park in a different way. Once uh, you have visited the national park, uh, another classical and must-do excursion is navigating on the Beagle Channel. Um, there are many different options depending on the budget, the time, the season, uh, and I will now explain them. I understand that uh, it can be a bit confusing as there are many options, so please, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask us. So as you can see on the map, uh, these are all the possibilities navigating the uh, big old channel. We have half days navigations, full days, including the penguin sensing, uh, not including them with uh, disembarking or without disembarking. Um, one thing that is important to note is that it always depends on weather condition. And we all know that in Patagonia, uh, the winds can be very strong. Therefore, we always recommend booking the navigation on the first days of uh, arrival. Uh, that way, in case it is cancelled, you can postpone to the next days during the stay in Ushuaia. Let's start with the more conventional uh, navigation, which is called Beagle Cruise and Sea Lion. It is a navigation that operates all year long and it lasts two hours and 30. You have two sailing a day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So the itinerary will be the following. They leave the Ushuaia Bay from the Ushuaia Sport. They will navigate to um, the Bird Island, the uh, Sea Lion Island, then they will pass by the Lighthouse de Zeclerer and continue to uh, Ushuaia Bay, um, back to Ushuaia. This is a picture of the Sea Lion Island, Le Zeclerer Lighthouse, and back to Ushuaia. Then uh, another classical excursion that will last a bit longer is the Beagle Cruise and Disembarking. This option will include the same sightseeing and a disembarking on the Bridges Island with a 30 minutes hike to a viewpoint from where passengers will have a great view of Ushuaia and the Big Old Channel. It operates all year and it lasts four hours. There is a sailing in the morning and uh, in the afternoon. So this uh, Bridges Island are here, allowing to have a great view of all the Bahia uh, de Ushuaia. This is a picture of the Bridges Island when they disembark. So as you can see, it is a very soft hike. There is almost no elevation. I think it's uh, 50 meters elevation. It's very easy and accessible. And then we have the famous uh, Beagle uh, Channel navigation with penguins. This, uh, all the excursions, including the penguins, will always depend on the season. So penguin season in Ushuaia is from October to March. This is when uh, the penguin colonies uh, settle in the region. This excursion, this navigation is a five hour navigation. Uh, during which they will do the same uh, itinerary as the previous navigation. They will leave Ushuaia by, uh, by the Bird Island, Sea Lion Island, the Le Secreto Lighthouse, and they will continue to Isla Marticho, where the penguin colony is settled. And they will observe the penguins from the boat. They will, be, uh, they will not disembark on the island as this requires special boats and it is another kind of excursion. So this is a picture of how they will observe the penguins. On this island, on the Marticho Island, you will meet the Papua penguins and Gentoo penguins. These are two kinds of penguins you can find in Ushuaia. 
And then for passengers who have a full day to dedicate uh, to the Big Old Channel's excursion, we recommend Big Old Channel with Estancia Harverton. It includes also a sightseeing of the penguins. So uh, these excursions operate from October to March, and it is a eight hour uh, excursion. Estancia Harberton is a very important monument of the region. It is, it, it is one of the oldest Tierra del Fuego uh, Estancia. The so Bridges family founded it and they still run it. It is the fifth generation now. It is located on the banks of the Beagle Channel and it is reachable by land or by boat. So here is Estancia Halberton. So during this excursion, they will leave by uh, the Ushuaia by boat, visit the same um, high, highlights as uh, the previous navigations. They will see the penguins on Marticho Island. They will not disembark and they will reach Estancia Halberton where they will disembark. In the Estancia, they will visit the buildings, uh, the uh, museum with uh, the history of the families, the history of the region and the local fauna. And then they will have time for lunch. And then at the end of the excursion, they will come back to Ushuaia by land, by route J and route three. So they will go by boat and come back by vehicle. This is a picture of the Estancia Halberton and the museum Akatushun and the Bird Islands. And then last but not least, the Beagle uh, Channel navigation included Harberton and a walk with the penguins. So this is the only navigation that will include a disembarking on the Marticho Island and allow passengers to walk among the penguins. It operates from October to March and it is a full day excursion. They will, as the previous uh, excursion, they will leave Ushuaia, pass by the same highlights. They will first reach Estancia Halberton have time to wander about and visit a bit. And then in Estancia Harberton, they will uh, embark on Zodiac boats and reach Marticho Island. Those boats are smaller and they are allowed to reach Marticho Island without damaging the uh, land. This is a picture of the boat they take to reach the Estancia Harberton, and then a picture of the Zodiac boats to reach the uh, Marticho Island. So only 20 uh, person are allowed at once on Marticho Island. Uh, this is to preserve the tranquility of the colony uh, and the penguins are, the, they are usually with the babies. Uh, therefore, passengers will have to take turn to embark on the Zodiac while some of them are visiting the Estancia. 20 of uh, the passengers will go to the Marticho Island and then they will turn. They will have a one hour stay on the island with the penguins and then they will go back to Estancia Harberton. And at the end of um, the excursion, they will go back to Ushuaia by land as the previous uh, excursion. Um, then uh, for passengers who arrive in the morning in Ushuaia, for example, or leave in the afternoon, we recommend taking the city tour of Ushuaia. It is an excursion that operates all year and it has a duration of three hours. It is a great excursion for passengers who like history and nature. And uh, what we do recommend is always add the museum tour to the city tour. Um, it is quite a short excursion, so it is, it, it's quite okay to take it at the end of the day, for example. This is the itinerary, uh, the bus, the double-decker bus we'll do visiting uh, Ushuaia. And uh, it will stop at two museums, the end of the world museum, where you will learn more about the local fauna and flora and the history of the first inhabitants, uh, as I mentioned before, the shamanists and their culture. And uh, the Presidio Museum, which used to be the prison that was uh, built in the first um, half of the 20th century, um, as Ushuaia used to be a, a prison. And um, the uh, built the visit of the prison is quite an important aspect of the history of Ushuaia. Uh, this is a picture of Ushuaia from uh, the Big Old Channel. And uh, once your passengers have done uh, those three excursions, I recommend for passengers who want to visit uh, more of Tierra del Fuego and to learn more about the region, to at least stay one or two days more to explore the back country of Tierra del Fuego, as it is very rich in nature and um, culture. So uh, when remaining in Ushuaia, these uh, are the three excursions uh, we would recommend, one of them, not all of them, of course, and they all operate on a full day modality. We will um, 
start with Lakes Off-Road Excursion. It is an excursion that operates all year. It uh, lasts eight hours and it always includes a barbecue lunch. It operates on the summer and the winter a bit differently. The um, itinerary is they will uh, leave Ushuaia by uh, land. Then they will continue, stop at the panoramical point to see the Vache Caravajal. Uh, it's a great uh, valley. I have some pictures later. later. Um, then they will pass by the Garibaldi Pass and have a great picture of uh, the Lake uh, Escondido crossing the end. Here are the ends range, so they will pass on the other side of the ends. And then they will enter the forest, the forest to, to reach the banks of Lago Fagnano, uh, and they will go around the Lake Fagnano, have a stop in the middle of the wood uh, to, to have lunch and welcome back to Ushuaia. So this is a picture of the Garibaldi Pass and the Escondido Lake. A picture of when they are entering the forest and going through uh, off the beaten tracks. And during this excursion, uh, you might be uh, lucky and see some beavers or at least the dams. The history of the beavers is quite interesting. It is not an endemic uh, species of the region. Uh, in 1946, the militaries uh, implemented 10 couples of beavers imported from Canada uh, in the Tierra del Fuego. They were hoping to develop the fur trade in Tierra del Fuego, but it did not work at all. As the weather is much nicer uh, in Tierra del Fuego, it's not as cold as in Canada. The beavers did not develop a, a great fur and um, as they did not need to. So the military released them into the wild and uh, the beavers uh, developed more and more uh, and they multiplied a lot. Uh, we now count uh, some 110,000 specimens in the whole region. They also cross on the Chilean side of the Tierra del Fuego uh, and they don't have any natural predator. Also the trees uh, and the local fauna, uh, flora in the region is not as strong as in Canada. It is not adapted and <clears throat> the beavers are damaging the nature a lot. So there are several programs uh, that are trying to reduce the numbers now, but it is an interesting fact of, a fact of how human can interact with nature and can damage nature without um, meaning to. Then um, this is a picture of the Fagnano Lake. This is during the uh, summer edition and a picture of what you can see during the winter. So as you can see, they will go um, by very unexplored land and where no other excursions will go. They will be alone uh, with their, the other passengers from the excursion and their guide. And there's a picture of the Lake Fagnano. This is where they will have lunch in the middle of the wood. And for more active passengers, we also have the, uh, this option that is called Lakes Off-Road. They will do the same itinerary and they will include a canoe experience on the Lake Fagnano. It operates only uh, during the summer from October to April and it also, also includes a barbecue lunch. Then the uh, second full day excursion inside the Tierra del Fuego we recommend is Cape San Pablo and Estancia Rolito. It is a nine hour excursion. It operates only during the summer from October to April and it includes a barbecue lunch. So during uh, this excursion, they will discover a very different landscape reaching Cape San Paulo. And it is the only excursion going there. Therefore, they will be also uh, away from the uh, massive excursions. So they will take route three and they will continue to Cape San Paulo. <clears throat> they will reach the Cape and go to uh, the sorry, uh, go to the lighthouse of uh, San Pablo. It was destroyed by an earthquake uh, in the middle of the uh, 19th century, uh, 18th century. Sorry, and uh, they will take a short hike to what is called the Desdemona. Uh, Desdemona is a shipwreck uh, that, due to uh, bad maneuvers. Uh, stay stuck there. And once they visited this, they will have some time for lunch, <clears throat> which is included, and they will visit the Estancia El Rolito. They will meet the families that live there, uh, they will show them their uh, sheep production, and they will serve a nice and hot drink that can be very much appreciated as it is a cold region. And then they will come back to Ushuaia. So this excursion is allowed to see a different aspect of the region. Um, Estancia Rolito is also an accommodation for passengers who want to get out of Ushuaia or for cell drives passengers, for example. Um, it's 
so it's located on uh, Cape San Paulo uh, and it is dedicated to rural tourism and ship. They have six rooms, uh, they always offer barbecue lunch uh, and if you only go for uh, if you go for the night they also uh, have all inclusive uh, programs such as hiking in the forest, photographic safari uh, and many more about the region. This is a, another picture, a picture of the inside of the estancia. So it is a very traditional estancia, as you can see. And then another full day excursion that I strongly recommend for those who like uh, having local experience is the King Crab Fishing Experience and Puerto Almenza. It is an excursion that operates from October to April. It lasts nine hours and it includes lunch with Santosha. Santosha is the king crab you can see here on the picture and it is an endemic species of Ushuaia and Terra del Fuego. So it is the only place where you can uh, find those crabs. Uh, it is a very nice gastronomical experience and it will show a, a local community, Puerto Almenza, which is a fisherman's village uh, that lives only out of the Santosha fishing and the other species that live uh, in the big old channel. So they will leave Ushuaia by land on Route 3, Route J, and they will reach Puerto uh, Almenza on the big old channel. So they will uh, stop by some uh, panor panoramical viewpoints on the way, and then they will embark on the boats to fish with uh, those back baskets you can see on the pictures. Passengers who do, want, do not want to embark uh, don't have to, they can stay in Puerto Almenza, of course, but the idea is that it's an interactive uh, excursion. Once they will catch enough Santosha for, all, uh, for everyone, they will get back to land, and a cook will, uh, a local cook and chef will come to the passengers and will show them how to cook the Santosha. Passengers who do not want to watch uh, this uh, part of the excursion, they can uh, go with the guide around the village of Puerto Almenza, and then they will enjoy a lunch of Santosha. All the menus are available for children, for example, or those who do not eat seafood, and then they will come back to uh, Ushuaia. Ushuaia, uh, now that we are on the gastronomical experiences, Ushuaia has great gastronomical options. It's uh, very different from the other uh, gastronomy experiences you can have in Argentina, uh, since it is by the ocean. So we have the famous, the star of it all, Santosha and the king crab that you will find in every restaurant. But of course, we have selected the best places to uh, taste the king crab. And we also have uh, some great seafood as the black hake, for example, which is a local fish. We organize gastronomical experiences and tours in Ushuaia and in the estancia surrounding Ushuaia. And we also have the famous Patagonian asado. Argentinian always includes the asado in uh, the local gastronomy, of course. So when um, we have passengers that are a bit active and want to get away from the masses, want to discover the local nature and mountains, we have a great number of excursions and offer uh, that we can uh, um, propose to them. First of all, I would recommend the Gable Island and Canoe experience. So this is a nice way to <clears throat> once you've visited the national park to uh, visit the big old channel in another way than from the classical navigation. It is an excursion that operates from October to March and it lasts 10 hours. So they will um, leave Ushuaia by land, they will reach Route G at the intersection with Route K, they will uh, hop, <clears throat> hop off the vehicle and walk until the banks of big old channel. From there they will take a, a zodiac, navigate in front of the Marticho Island, they will not disembark, they will see the penguins, and then they will reach Gable Island. In Gable Island, they will have lunch, and they will do the kayak experience on the Beagle Channel, and then they will get back to Ushuaia. So these are some pictures. This tree is called the uh, flag tree, as there is a lot of wind in Ushuaia, the uh, wind transforms the shape of the local flora and the trees. So this is one of the famous uh, highlight and stops. This is a picture of the interpretative hike they do on the Gable Island to learn more about the local flora, for example. Then another excursion that does not uh, include a navigation starting in Ushuaia is the Estancia Halberton and Walk with Penguins. It is an excursion that operates from October to March and it lasts 10 hours. 
Remember, I talked about navigation, including a walk with the penguins and Estancia Harberton. This one is a bit different because it includes a hike that is more demanding. Therefore, it is not accessible to all passengers. Um, so this excursion is quite similar to the previous one with the kayak. They will uh, leave Ushuaia by land. They will reach uh, the banks. Uh, they will reach Estancia Harberton. Then from there, they will take the Zodiac. They will go on Martisho Island, walk among the penguin, and then they will go back to land and have an eight kilometer hike in the Tierra del Fuego. They will reach the waterfall and then they will come back to Ushuaia. I take this opportunity to uh, mention that Estancia Harberton is also an accommodation option for passengers who are looking to get away from uh, sleeping in Ushuaia. It is the oldest ranch in Argentina sector of the Tierra del Fuego. It was founded by Thomas Bridges, the first uh, European to settle in this region. And it is located 60 kilometers uh, east of Ushuaia. It was named Harberton after his wife's place of origin in Devon, England. And uh, it was the first productive enterprise in Tierra del Fuego. Today, the members of the fifth and sixth generation live uh, in the Estancia uh, and the original uh, house that was built in 1886. It was declared a national historic monument in 1999, and the Estancia maintained its original architecture with wooden and building uh, covered with uh, corrugated iron, its garden, its dock, and stone terraces. The Estancia is not included in any current protected area, but it values uh, really, in fact, they lie on the fact that it is one of the oldest area with conservation sites uh, within the livestock management plan. Uh, for example, they, they are the owners of the Martisho Island and they do everything to uh, preserve it. And when uh, staying in uh, Estancia Harberton, you have six rooms and it operates as an all-inclusive. So you can take uh, the uh, navigations to Martisho Island, walk with the penguins. You have hikes, trek, bicycle experience in the region. Then uh, a very famous uh, trekking in Ushuaia is the Laguna Esmeralda. It is a uh, trekking that operates from October to April, and it is a six hour uh, trekking going very slow. It is an easy trekking, very accessible with a very low elevation, 200 meters, not more. And they will pass by the Carabajal Valley, an area with a pit that is protected and reach the Laguna Esmeralda. As it is uh, so famous and easy to access, there are many people who uh, do it. And for passengers who want to get away from the masses, we do not recommend this trekking as they will be uh, with a lot of people around them. But it is a very nice uh, landscape and scenery. For passengers who really want to avoid the masses, we recommend Laguna Turquesa and Monte Carabajal um, trek, which is on the other side of Ushuaia. It operates from November to March, and it has a medium difficulty. It includes more uh, elevation. These are some pictures of what you will see. So they will face the range mountains. Then we have the Cerro Pelado trekking. It operates from November to April. It is a nine hour trek and it is more demanding and difficult, uh, requires previous experience and training. And then once, one I really recommend because it includes a, a very nice experience in the uh, Glaciar Vinciguera is the Glaciar Vinciguera and Laguna de los Tampanos trek. It is operating from November to April. It is an eight-hour excursion, and it is considered as difficult. I think it requires a uh, previous uh, training uh, for passengers who want to do it. They, reach, they will reach Laguna de los Tampanos, which offers a, a unique landscape, and the glaciar. They will be able to enter uh, beside the glaciar, so this is quite a, a unique experience. Uh, and then for passengers who want to experience exclusive excursions and tour, um, we offer helico helicopter overflights. There are many different options from seven minutes of a flight to 15 minutes and uh, half an hour or more. Um, the options are flying over Ushuaia and see the Big Old Channel or flying around uh, the summits and lake of the region. So this is the overflight of Ushuaia and this is a flight on the Monte um, Susana, for example, where you can stop and have a, a champagne cup, um, some pictures of the glaciers that pass by and the Carabajal Valley. Um, so this is a very nice uh, 
excursion uh, and option for passengers who have the budget to do it. And uh, now that we talked about the uh, full day excursions, how the excursions, um, it is important to mention that Ushuaia is a winter center. It is a famous ski resort and a snow destination uh, in Argentina. Many cross country national skiing team from Europe come to Ushuaia during the summer to train as our winter is uh, starting now and it will finish uh, around September when it is summer in Europe. Therefore, uh, they can come to Ushuaia and train. We have uh, different excursions uh, related to snow. Uh, from for active passengers and for passengers who do not know how to ski, we offer uh, skiing classes on the Cerro Castor, which is the national the, the local uh, ski resort. We offer uh, snowboard classes, cross country skiing, and snowshoeing experiences. For example, on the picture you will see an excursion that is called Between Summits and Ocean. Um, this is one of the few regions in the world where you will be able to. Uh, hike in the snow and have a view over the ocean at the same time, which is quite impressive. We have some very accessible itineraries from more uh, demanding ones, of course, and guided. We also offer uh, husky sled experiences. It is a very nice local experience uh, where passengers will have a lot of fun. It is an excursion that is great for families and it will include lunch and dinner in a refuge uh, with hot drinks. And for passengers who do not want to do the sled um, experience, we have the same itineraries with a snowmobile, for example. Um, and this is a picture of uh, the stop at the refuge to have the hot drink. We also have uh, um, the snow and fire excursion. Uh, it, include, it includes a ride with sled or uh, a snowmobile mobile at nightfall, and then a little walk uh, with snowshoes and dinner in one of these dome. It is a very nice experience to enjoy the early nights uh, of the region, as in the winter, the night is uh, around 4 or 5 p.m. And now let's talk about uh, the cruises from the end of the world towards wide lands. Beyond Tierra del Fuego, when leaving Tierra del Fuego, uh, it is famous that Ushuaia is the gateway and exit for many cruises. So um, we can uh, difference two types of cruises. First, the Antarctica uh, cruises, as the city is located 1,000 kilometers away from the continent. Uh, so every year between November and February, we have a lot of uh, expedition cruises that set sail. Depending on the route, they can vary from nine nights to 15 nights or more. Um, and some of them include the famous uh, Falklands. So they will reach uh, Antarctica, living from Ushuaia. During those cruises, you will see many marine life and glacier formations, local fauna as penguins, maybe some whales and orca, sea lions, and very wide landscape and glaciers. Some uh, famous cruises, to name just a few, that leave Ushuaia to the Antarctic are uh, Quark, Antaply, Albatros, uh, Aurora, Le Ponant, uh, ocean wide. These are only a few that live from Ushuaia. And then uh, we have those expedition crews that are way smaller. Uh, it is less luxury um, as per se, even though the services are excellent. And uh, those cruises are way shorter. They are never 50 nights and they allow to cross uh, from Ushuaia to passing by Cape Horn. Some of them uh, will take you to Chile, some of them will return to Ushuaia. So, for example, that one that we really recommend and that uh, is included in uh, our fixed departures and other itineraries we offer is the Australis cruise. This cruise opt uh, operates from September to April and uh, it is a five nights, four, five days, four nights, five days, sorry, uh, cruise, leaving Ushuaia going to Punta Arenas in Chile or vice versa. So, this is uh, the map of uh, the itinerary. So when leaving Ushuaia, they leave Ushuaia, they will go to Cape Horn, slim, uh, sleep in Walaya Bay, then they will continue their route to Glacier Lai, Glacier Piar, continue to Tucker Islet and Enros Bay and arrive in Punta Arenas. And when leaving Punta Arenas, they will do the same itinerary but reverse to Ushuaia. This is a very nice excursion, um, excursion. this is a very nice cruise to combine uh, Argentinian Patagonia and Chilean Patagonia avoiding to take flights. It usually 
it is quite famous uh, and uh, all of our markets are quite uh, friendly with it actually it is a very affordable cruise it is not too expensive and it allows to combine famous regions of both uh, countries this is a picture of what you can see uh, during the cruise it includes a lot of excursions they will disembark twice a day uh, to reach the lands and visit the glaciers and the penguin and then we also have um, the cruises that will stop in Ushuaia for one or two days. Those are the around South America uh, cruises. So they usually start or in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil or in Uruguay or Buenos Aires. And they will cross uh, all South America uh, from Buenos Aires to passing by Puerto Madre in Ushuaia, uh, the, all the Chilean coast, Punta Arenas, Valparaiso, etc. Just to name a few of those cruises, we have Luponant, Princess, Norwegian, NCL, etc. So for those passengers stopping by Ushuaia for one or two days, we are used to offer um, those full days excursion, uh, hopping off, hopping on the cruise. And then um, we, uh, I'm going to present some excursions that goes deep into the Tierra del Fuego that are quite exclusive and different from what you can see when staying in Ushuaia. For example, we have the Darwin expedition. Darwin is an important figure in Ushuaia as uh, he was included on the second exploration cruise in, uh, he participated in this cruise operated by Fitzroy uh, in, 19, uh, in the 19th century. So he uh, discovered a lot of things about biology in the Tierra del Fuego. This excursion um, is operating in next season in 2022, and it will operate from November to February. It is a three days, two night uh, excursion. Um, <clears throat> so they will uh, leave Ushuaia by land on Route 3 by, by Toluin, cross to Lago Blanco, uh, and arriving uh, in Chile through Runman Pass, they will uh, arrive in a place called Caleta Josefina, from where they will board the Zodiac to reach the boat that will take uh, the passengers for a two days tour to the fjord and Glacier Parade. They will spend two days on the boat, uh, all, uh, the, our, all meals are included. There are eight double cabin and three private bathrooms. Uh, the meal on board are gastronomical. And uh, the season expedition crews that uh, require disembarkation and embarkation by Zodiac. And after two days on the cruise, they will come back to Ushuaia. So this is a very nice uh, project that will be is very exclusive for passengers looking for uh, more adrenaline uh, excursions. Then uh, for passengers who are fanatics of the penguins and the local fauna, we have the King Penguin Reserve that is located in Chile. It is reachable all year. Here is a map uh, how to reach the King Penguin Reserve. It is actually in Chile, but it is easier to access it by Ushuaia than from Punta Arena. You have to cross through the San Sebastian Pass. Uh, it is the fastest way to reach it. It's about 350 kilometers, and we usually recommend uh, to sleep uh, in uh, here in Onaisin or Cameron uh, before visiting the Pinguino Rey uh, Reserve. A picture of the entrance of the park uh, and uh, of the penguins. Here you will find the king penguins, of course, but also some Papua penguins, um, and uh, you will have the whole day to discover it. And then last but not least is the uh, Navarino Island. Navarino Island is located in front of Ushuaia. I mentioned it before in this excursion. Uh, you can see it from Ushuaia and it is in Chile. Um, the crossing from Ushuaia requires a minimum of one night and the capital city of the Navarino Island is Puerto Williams, which I mentioned before. Um, this is a map of Ushuaia. You need to leave Ushuaia by boat. There's one crossing a day. You reach Puerto Navarino, and then you have a 44 kilometers ride by bus to the uh, Puerto Williams uh, village. As uh, there is only one crossing a day, uh, leaving in the morning from Ushuaia and coming back to Ushuaia in the afternoon, they have to uh, sleep at least one night uh, in Puerto Williams or near Puerto Williams. And for this, we recommend the Rente Lodge. Uh, it is an all-inclusive lodge. It includes 13 rooms. It's located five kilometers from the center, uh, but they have a shuttle service. Uh, 
um, with uh, it has a view over the big old channel. All the rooms have a view over the big old channel, uh, and they offer all meals. Of course, you can uh, have all inclusive programs from two, three, four, or more nights. They uh, include some camping activities that vary in duration uh, and according to your interest, of course, some expeditions, some hike, uh, some uh, recognition of the local fauna. We usually recommend for passengers who want to do this all-inclusive programs to have a good physical condition and knowledge of the mountain. Uh, those are the most uh, southern trekking routes. Some pictures of uh, the rooms. And now I will show you a video of the Australis cruise uh, I mentioned before to close this webinar so you can have an idea of what to see in the region. I've sailed many seas and have seen hundreds of landscapes, but something happens here at the end of the world that has kept me behind this helm year after year. Maybe it's because aboard Australis, you become witness to thousands of stories jealously treasured by the seas of Patagonia, which only become real to those who have the privilege to sail here. Here, where majestic glaciers make you feel small, and silence becomes the loudest of sounds. Here, where you can live all four seasons in one day, and the sunset can display a thousand colors. Here, where the imposing landscapes remain untouched by humans and, at the same time, allow you to feel the invisible trace of former sailors that permeates these passages with a unique sense of magic. It's this same magic that shines in the eyes of our guests, and it is through them that I live every journey as if it was the first one. It fills me with pride to take them safely to Cape Horn and sail through these waters that were once so difficult to conquer, but can now be enjoyed with ease from our comfortable cabins, delighting in the warm hospitality of our crew, sharing moments of amazement, and feeling part of a unique journey. And so, enchanted by the landscapes and encouraged by our expedition guides, the adventurous spirit of our passengers awakens, keeping mine alive. Because when we sail through the most hidden marvels of Tierra del Fuego, every trip is a blank page ready for a new story to be written. Australis. 30 years of sailing. Um, so all of uh, the ideas and combination we uh, presented today and two weeks ago in the webinar uh, about El Calafate, uh, you will find them in our uh, 2021 tour book uh, that is here for inspirational journeys. So you will find them in the hidden treasure section, Patagonia section and uh, the bestseller section, of course. Uh, thank you very much for participating. Here is a map of Argentina, so you can see uh, that we covered the region of Ushuaia and Tierra del Fuego here, and uh, two weeks ago we did El Calafate. The next webinar uh, is in three weeks on June 1st, and we will talk about Buenos Aires, its many attractions, and the estancias around Buenos Aires with the gaucho culture. Um, please follow us on social media. We regularly post uh, some pictures and inspirational journeys and ID on Instagram, on Facebook also, and uh, register to our YouTube channel uh, as we do uh, report, uh, we do publish the webinars on our YouTube channel and some great inspirational videos. Yes, um, is there right. any questions? Okay, I was uh, answering some questions, but let's uh, read the chat box that I yeah. think that we have some. Uh, okay, so Jackie Lou, for the visa Philippines passport, our client is allowed to get an ATA if they are if they have a valid US B2 and Schengen visa uh, that is still valid for more than three months. Yeah. Yes. 
you have to have uh, with the US passport, you don't need any visa, but it has to be valid for six months after the date they leave Ushuaia, uh, Argentina. And same for Chile. Any other um, question? No, no other okay. questions so far. So, well, I also shared the link for our next webinar that you already told them. So, well, happy to have the chance to meet at least virtually. So yes. Thank you very much for joining us, all of you. Have a nice day ahead. Yes. And we keep in touch. Yes, and uh, see you on the next journey uh, through Buenos Aires.